In today's video, we are taking a look behind the science of water buoyancy. Guys, we are here today at True Rest Float Spot in Provo, Utah, and I am here with Chris, and he is allowing us to use his facility today to try and test water buoyancy. Chris, can you give us a little bit of an intro on what it is you do here? Absolutely. So we super relax the brain, mm -hmm. super relax the body. Mm -hmm. You're floating in 11 inches of water and 1,000 pounds of Epsom salt. So that's going to keep you buoyant and uh -huh. it's going to super relax your muscles, nerves, and joints. So kind of like what they did in Stranger Things. Yes. That is awesome. Here's the basic idea. We are at True Rest, a float spa that allows you to float in salt water in a sensory deprivation chamber. We want to take a look at how these work and just how buoyant the water is. So Nate is prepping stuff right now. As soon as he gets back, we're going to head back there. We're going to take a look at the float pool that we're going to be using today and uh, get started. So this is a float pod. It looks like it's from sci-fi future science and I think that's intentional. It's like laying on Baymax. It's a personal pool that's big enough to fit in without hitting and bumping into the walls too much. You can see inside here, this is where we have our water with a thousand pounds of Epsom salt dissolved into it. The idea is that it's kept it basically the same temperature as the surface of your skin so that if you stop moving, you don't really feel it at all. It just elevates you, suspends you, and that's it. You just are floating in it. This is going to be interesting for me. I am going to be testing this out. I've often been interested by the idea of a sensory deprivation chamber. Yep mostly inspired by the TV show Fringe, which is great, you should check it out. Human bodies are generally a little buoyant in water, meaning they are less dense than water. Uh, the effect is exaggerated with the salt water. So I'm calling this salt water. This is not salt like ocean water or table salt. It's not sodium chloride. This is a magnesium sulfate salt. With water, to us, it all seems all packed together in fluid with no gaps in it. But if you look at it at a molecular level, the water molecules with the one oxygen and the two hydrogen are actually somewhat larger and they, they aren't packed perfectly tight in together. They've got space between them as they're floating around as a liquid. When you dissolve a salt into the water, it breaks the salt up into its individual tiny little ions and those actually fit in between the water molecules. So it's kind of like if you had a bunch of ping pong balls in a cup and then you added a bunch of sand to that cup. It's not really gonna add any more volume. The ping pong balls aren't going to spill out, but you're gonna fill the gaps between the ping pong balls. That's what happens when you dissolve a lot of salt into water. It sort of fills in in between all of the water molecules. You keep the same volume, but there's a lot more weight to it. Therefore, it's more dense. I dipped my hand in the water just to feel the temperature. Yeah, yeah. And now that it's dried off, like, one minute later, you can see the salt is just crystallized all over my skin. It's not, I don't think, a 100% saturated solution. You probably could dissolve more salt in, but not a lot. And so this is a buoyancy tester. It kind of gives you an idea of just how dense the water is. So the idea is that this weight down here and this sealed tube is all carefully calibrated. So I believe with regular water, this should sink down to the 1.000 line. So will it be exactly that? I don't know. We hit it, we heard it hit the bottom, but it's not touching, it did bounce off. We're within half a millimeter. That really is right on the line. So we're seeing the density of this water is one. That's what we expect. That's what the scale is, one gram. Now we're gonna see how this goes in our float pod. So this was sinking like way more in the regular water. This right here is at about 1.28, 1.29 even. It's getting really close to 1.3. The average regular density of the Dead Sea is about 1.24. So this is a 0.26 grams per millimeter more dense than the Dead Sea. So this should really float quite a bit and me quite well. So we have a few different objects. Some things I think will float, some things I'm not quite so sure about. All right. First up, a golf ball. Mm -hmm. Pretty standard. Here's what happens if we put a golf ball in regular water. It sinks nicely to the bottom. How are you gonna get that out? All right, one standard, fairly fresh chicken egg. Here we go. And sinks about like the golf ball. A little slower. Maybe there is an bit. air pocket in there. Yeah, and eggs are interesting because as they go bad, 
things break down and you end up with more gas in the shell and yep. a bad egg will float. And that's actually a test you can do. If your eggs are floating, don't use them. This is a pot of water and I have two different blocks of wood and they're both very dense. I have not tested this one here. This is black wood. It's one of the densest types of wood. This one is called lignum vita or vitae or something like that. I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it, but it is known to be the densest type of wood there is. I want to see if this floats in my pot of water. I don't actually know. So you can see that block of wood slowly sunk down to the bottom of this pot. If I bring it back up, let go. So this is just barely higher density than water. And let's talk a little bit about what that means to be higher density. For equal volumes, so if it takes up the exact same amount of space, density is which one weighs more. So if you have water, if you could keep water in the exact same shape as this block of wood, you can, but if you could, and then you weighed them on a balance scale, this would be just slightly heavier. So to give you an idea of kind of what that means or to give you a basis of comparison, a liter of water weighs 2.2 pounds or exactly one kilogram. Which means if you had a liter of this wood, it would weigh a little bit more than one kilogram. Wood isn't usually measured in liters, but you get the idea. Yeah. So what you're looking at is when the object is in the water, if it's pushing away water that weighs more than it does, it will float. If it's pushing away water that weighs less than it does, it will sink. And that is known as water buoyancy or upthrust. So here we have a block of this lignum vitae. Now, unfortunately, my pot is not big enough to hold the it's whole thing. It's not gonna matter, guys. But this wood, it <laughs> sinks quickly and immediately in water. It does not float. So now what we wanna do is test these four same objects using our float pod water. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna fill this cup up here. All right, so same order, golf yeah, ball. Golf ball. <laughs> and at the top. Not even a contest. This is the same egg that was sinking to the bottom of our regular water. <laughs> Floats quite nicely on the and surface of our salt water. And it's still a fresh egg. Still fresh. It's only 10 minutes older than it was last time we tested it. It's not <laughs> enough time for it to go bad. So this black wood sunk in our regular water. All right, here goes. About a quarter of the <laughs> block of wood is actually just sticking up out of the water. Okay, our lignum vita wood, densest wood known to man. I have floats. slightly less faith in this one. Sinks immediately mm -hmm. in regular water. Now looking it up, it is possible that this will float. It kind of depends on like the block and how dry it is. The density is 1.24, is that right? I think so, around okay. that. So and this water currently is 1.29-ish. So in theory, it is gonna float. We'll okay. see if it holds up to that theory. Oh my gosh. There you go. Oh my gosh, there is, I'm so excited. There is like none of it. Yes. Sticking up out of the water. The other one, about one quarter of the block was sticking up out of the surface. We this floated has, Lignum Vita. This has virtually nothing sticking up out of the surface, but it is floating. Normal water, density of one. This water, density of 1.29. Dead sea, about 1.24, which is about the same as the Explains Lignum Vita. Float. A human body is 0.985. So even in normal water, a human body will usually float, especially if you breathe in, because that increases your volume while adding negligible change to your weight. Now, if you guys want to try some of these small experiments at home, it's actually pretty easy. You can take an egg, put in a cup, and then you can just keep adding salt water and gently stirring, and eventually that egg will float to the surface. You and can you recreate can that at home different types of salt. Yes, you can use Epsom salts, but you can use table salt. Just make sure you're, if you're younger, get your parents' permission first before you use all the table salt in the house because it will take a lot. All right, I think it's time for me to climb in this thing. It is, but you have to shower off first. So Mark and I are gonna leave. All right, now before I get in, I am going to shower. I'm actually gonna be wearing just all of this, so I'm just gonna shower with all this to wash off anything that might be on it because I don't want to contaminate. There's a, a very thorough cleaning process these go through every time they're used, but best to make it so the filters don't have to work too hard, so I'll be cleaning off. Enjoy, this is the only time you're ever gonna see him shower on camera. Okay, right. ready? 
Here it goes, into the skin into the temperature. Abyss. Yeah, just like that. Um, yeah, kind of sit legs down and okay, then... It's already pushing up on me more, uh -huh. I can tell. But it's when I lie down, I think it's supposed to get the full effect. You just sort of, yeah, pop up and it's the coolest thing. Oh boy. You see? <laughs> Fun though, right? <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna try and give this about 10 minutes and see what it's like just floating as yeah. little sensory perception as possible. We're gonna go ahead and close this. Uh, Mark and I are going to stay very quiet and very still so that all the lights go off. Uh, the Without the lights, without sound, the sensory deprivation is odd. Guys, I've heard my own heartbeat and it's strange, so enjoy. Mm -hmm. And now we put some weight on top of it, and I rule the channel! Alright, so it's been 10 minutes. Let's see if Nate's still alive. Oh, he's alive! It's interesting. Uh, you can definitely feel yourself floating a lot more than normal. Like, you're just so far up out of the water. You know, I was just letting my head roll back as far as it would go, and it just, I, you know, water wasn't getting in my mouth or my nose or anything like that. Um, yeah, really was suspended up out of the water. Very interesting to feel. Did it feel like you were completely floating with the ambient temperature of the air? I could still feel like, especially like around my, any, any part of me where it was sticking up out of the water. Mm -hmm. So like my toes, the edges of my face, and like I didn't have my arms all the way in the water. Like I could feel it on the edges, the movement of the water, but yeah, because of the temperature and how much you're floating, you definitely do not feel it as much as normal. So cool. Thank you again so much to True Rest Float Spa in Provo. Chris, thank you so much. We were so happy to be here and I'm sure we'll be back at your facilities. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, that's it for today, but we've always got more cool stuff coming out. Go ahead and hit that button, subscribe, so you never miss out on a cool video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.